بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the enrichment but before we do that of course you remember our previous lesson let's revise it together we were talking about TV programs what kind of TV programs do you like and why what kind of TV programs do you dislike and why then we uh, read some articles about TV programs the Jeopardy, the quiz show and the Hoy, the family, uh, the family show. It's a morning show because it airs in the uh, morning. Then we uh, read about the famous, a well-known National Geographic channel, the uh, documentaries about animals, nature, science, and technology. Of course, it's very well known. Then we took uh, the CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, uh, who is about a team of forensic scientists who investigate mysterious and unusual deaths unusual of course this is uh, a very well known also uh, tv show then we read about top gear top gear also a very well known tv show it's about cars from the name itself top gear it's an actually an award winning british television series about cars with a humorous style then we uh, read sasuke the famous japanese uh, Sports show, it's very popular in Japan, of course, entertainment that airs twice a year. It's about 100 fighters and athletes compete in one of the most challenging and physical contests imaginable. Then we read about the language builder regarding the telenovelas and soap operas, and we learned how soap operas, they don't end, they never end. The stories just evolve over the years. So these are today's objectives. Of course, we'll be studying about grammar, the unit four. So today's objectives are to identify direct object and indirect object in a sentence. The use of uh, four and two before the indirect object to rearrange words to create a direct and indirect object. Use direct and indirect objects to complete stories. Decide whether the words are direct or indirect objects. Find the mistake in a sentence. So we'll be learning about direct and indirect objects and we'll be taking some questions about them. So let's see this uh, sentence here. Jack sold the car. This is a really simple sentence. Jack sold the car and you can see the uh, picture of the car here. So what did Jack sell? Another simple question. What did Jack sell? Yes, that's easy. His car. Jack sold his car. So in this sentence, the car is the direct object of the verb sell. What did Jack sell? His car. So the car here in this sentence is the direct object from the name itself. It's the direct object because the verb sell, what's the direct object for the verb sell? What did Jack sell? His car. Jack sold the car to John. Again, Jack sold the car to John. And you can say Jack sold John the car. You can notice here we have two objects, of course, so we'll be learning about that. Who did Jack sell the car to? We know that Jack sold his car. Who did he sell it to? This is really simple, to John. So John is the indirect object. So John here is the indirect object. Of course, we know that uh, the car is the direct object and John here is the indirect object. So this is really simple. Notice the different, uh, notice the different positions of the indirect object before or after the direct object and the use of the preposition. So you notice here the indirect object, we can change the position of the indirect object. Again, notice the different positions of the indirect object before or after the direct object and the use of the preposition. So the indirect object uh, here, the indirect object here, John, it came after the direct object, the car, and here it came before the direct object, uh, uh, the car, with the help here, of course, of the preposition to. So we'll be discussing this uh, in a matter of minutes. So direct and indirect objects. A direct object 
is a noun or a preposition that receives the action of the verb. The direct object is a noun or, or a preposition which receives the action of the verb. So it's the receiver of the verb. This is the direct object. A direct object answer the question what or who. A direct object answer the question what or who. For example here, John wrote the poem. John wrote the poem. John likes his new teacher. An indirect object tells us, uh, tells us to or for whom the action is done. Again, an indirect object tells us to or for whom the action is done. So he's not the receiver of the verb. It was done for him. To or for whom the action is done. There must be a direct object for there, uh, for there to be an indirect object. So there is no indirect object without a direct object. So if you have to put an indirect object, there has to be a direct object in the sentence. John wrote the poem for his mother. John wrote the poem. So the poem here is the direct object for his mother. So his mother here is the indirect object. John read the poem to the audience again. So the poem here is a direct object to the audience. The audience here is indirect object. So this is really simple. If there is a preposition, if there is a preposition, the indirect object goes after the direct object. If there is a preposition, the indirect object, the indirect object, goes after the direct object. For example here, she gave the remote control to me. So to me. Again, she gave the remote control to me. You can see the preposition here too. She gave the remote control to me. If there is no preposition, the indirect object goes after, goes, sorry, goes before the direct object. If there is no preposition, if the sentence has no preposition, then the indirect object goes before the direct object. For the, uh, for the example here, she gave me the remote control. She gave me the remote control. So me here is the indirect object and the remote control is the direct object. When the direct object is a pronoun, the pronoun goes before the indirect object. Again, when the direct object is a pronoun, if the direct object is a pronoun, then the pronoun goes before the indirect object. For example here, she gave it to me. She gave it, the pronoun it, to me. So the a direct object it comes before the indirect object me because it's a pronoun. The second part of the grammar here, to and for before indirect objects. To and for before indirect objects. So we'll be talking about indirect objects here regarding the words for and to. So let's begin with to here. We use to if the indirect object is receiving something. Again, we use to when if the indirect object is receiving something, he is getting something. We use to with these verbs. So we use to if the indirect object is receiving something, he is getting something, he is benefiting from someone. And we use to with these verbs like bring, confess, give, hand, lend, offer, pass, pay, promise, read, sell, send, show, take, tell, and write. So we use it with these verbs. For example here, will you pass a pillow to me? Again, will you pass, of course this is a question form, will you pass a pillow to me? So me here is the indirect object and I'm receiving the pillow, so I'm getting something. Will you pass a pillow to me? Note here that, uh, that the preposition to is not used when the indirect object comes before the direct object. Of course, this was mentioned before. Let's say it again. Note here that the preposition to is not used when, when the indirect object comes before 
the direct object. So if the indirect comes before the direct, we don't write to. Will you pass me a pillow? Will you pass me a pillow? Notice the difference here. The first one was, will you pass a pillow to me? Why? Because the, uh, the, because the indirect object came after. So when the indirect object comes before the direct object, we don't write to. Just like the example here, will you pass me a pillow? So here's some uh, sentences here. Let's read them together. Ali wrote a letter to Adil and told him about our trip. So Ali wrote a letter to Adil and told him about our trip. So Ali didn't have time to write. So Ali wrote the letter for him. Notice here, Ali didn't have time to write. So Ali uh, wrote the letter for him. So Ali wrote the letter for Adil. In which sentence does Adil get a letter? Is it the first sentence or the second sentence? Let's read them again. Ali wrote a letter to Adil and told him about our trip. The second sentence, Adil didn't have time to write, so Ali wrote the letter for him. So this is an easy question. In which sentence does Adil get a letter? It's the first sentence. Of course, this is easy. In the second sentence, Ali writes the letter for Adil as a favor, as a favor. So he is helping him. So Ali, in the second sentence, Ali is helping Adil by writing the letter for him instead of him as a favor. Ali, Adil didn't have time to write, so maybe he asked Ali to write it. So Ali wrote the letter for him, for him instead of him. Uh, in the second sentence, Ali writes the letter for Adil as a favor. So jumping to the word for here, we use for if the indirect object is benefiting from some kind of help. So we said about to, if he is receiving something, to, if he is receiving something, for if he is benefiting of some kind of help. There's a benefit, he's getting some kind of help. We use for with these verbs. Book, build, buy, cook, find, get, keep, leave, make, order, and reserve. For example here, my parents bought a new TV for me as a favor. Again, my parents bought a new TV for me. So I benefited by getting the TV. Note the preposition for is not used uh, when the indirect object comes before the direct object, same as to. His parents are buying him a new TV uh, for his graduation. The same with to. If the indirect object comes before the direct, we don't write to and we don't write for. With some verbs, the indirect object always follows the direct object. Again, with some verbs, notice the word some here, with some verbs, the indirect object always follows the direct object. And the preposition for cannot be omitted. It can't be omitted. We have to write it. For example, here are some words, answer, cash, change, close, fix, open, prepare, pronounce, and translate. For example, here, can you please translate the program for me? Can you please translate the program for me? We can't say, can you please translate the program me? We have to put the word for. It can't be omitted. So jumping here to the exercise A, complete the conversation with four or two. We have a conversation here between uh, Umar and Alex. Alex, uh, what, happened, uh, what happened in last night's episode of Fast and Safe? Umar, I recorded it. Is it to you or for you? Yes, that's correct. It's, I recorded it for you. I'm helping you as a gesture here, as a kind gesture. I recorded it for you. It was great. Tell me about it. Well, Alan wrote an email, Ahmed. So is it for or to? Yes, Alan wrote an email to Ahmed. So the email is going from Alan to Ahmed. If we said for, 
it means that Alan wrote an email instead of Ahmed. In it, he confessed, yes, he confessed to him that he had tampered with the engine of the car uh, he was driving. Ahmed kept reading the email to himself, that's correct. He couldn't believe that Alan would do such a thing. Then Alan tried to make up for it. He got a fantastic car. Yes, that's correct, for Ahmed to drive in this show. He bought a new helmet. That's correct, for him as a favor. He even sent a limo Ahmed's house. Yes, this is an easy one, to Ahmed's house to drive him to the studio. Alex said, what did Ahmed do? Umar replied, well, he was angry at first. Then he demanded that Alan make a public statement on air and promise that he would never do anything like that. Him again, is it for him or to him? Yes, of course, to him because he is the receiver here. Uh, uh, that he promised that he would never do anything like that to him again. Jumping to exercise B, rearrange the words to create two sentences. So we'll be rearranging the words to create two uh, sentences. One with the indirect object placed after the direct and the other one is vice versa. The indirect object placed before the direct object. So the first one here is already done for you. I sent the TV schedule John. You see here, I sent John the TV schedule. I sent John the TV schedule. And the other one is, I sent the TV schedule to John. So which is the direct object here? Yes, the direct object is the TV schedule. And the indirect object is John. So now you know. It's an easy exercise. Number one, the comedian told the audience a joke. The comedian told the audience a joke. So, how do we rearrange them? That's correct. Let's check the two sentences together. The comedian told the audience a joke. And the second one, the comedian told a joke to the audience to the audience. So the audience here are the receivers of the joke. Number two, a glass of water, the talk show host poured the celebrity. A glass of water, the talk show host poured the celebrity. So how do we rearrange these uh, words? That's correct. Let's read them together. The talk show host poured the celebrity a glass of water or you can say the talk show host poured a glass of water for the celebrity. Of course, the celebrity here is the indirect object and the direct object is a glass of water. And the verb here, of course, is poured, poured. Number three, the sitcom dad gave his wife his wallet. The, si the sitcom dad and the verb here is gave his wife his wallet wallet. So how do we write the two sentences here? Okay, let's read them together. The sitcom dad gave his wife his wallet, or you can say the sitcom dad gave his wallet to his wife, to his wife. So the wallet here is the direct and his wife is the indirect object. Continuing here with number four, his cheese, the cat, the cartoon mouse offer. So this is an easy one. We all know about cartoons, especially with cats and, and mice. So his cheese, the cat, the cartoon mouse offered. Yes, the cartoon mouse offered the cat his cheese, or you can say the cartoon mouse offered his cheese to the cat. So his cheese is the direct and the cat is the indirect object. Number five, the host passed the microphone an audience member. So now you know, yes, that's correct. The host passed an audience member the microphone, or you can say the host passed the microphone to an audience member. What about number six? The judges offered the contestants advice. 
the judges offered the contestants advice. So this is the direct object here and the indirect and the verb is offered. So this is an easy one here. The judges offered the contestants advice or you can say the judges offered advice to the contestants. They are the receivers of the advice. Another chance host offered the contestant. Number seven, it's an easy one. The host offered the contestant another chance, or you can say the host offered another chance to the contestant. And number eight, the chef made the studio audience a dessert. The chef made the studio audience a dessert. So the verb here is uh, made, and the direct object is desert, a dessert, and the indirect is the studio audience. So it's an easy one. The chef made the studio audience a dessert, or you can say the chef made a dessert for the studio audience. Exercise C here, look at the pictures. Use your own ideas to complete the stories. Use direct and indirect object. We see two pictures with two stories. The first one, Jamal had spent weeks planning a poster for uh, ecotourism in his country. And the second one, Ahmed's parents were proud of his achievement and wanted to do something special for him. So use your own ideas to complete the stories. Use direct and indirect objects. So we have two stories. Try to use direct and also indirect objects. Here are fun facts for you. Many people assume that teens are watching less TV now. Of course, we all assume that. Many people assume that teens, teenagers, are watching less TV now because they spend more time doing things like playing video games and surfing the internet. However, a recent study says that this isn't true. The study found that in the last five years, teens have been watching 6% more TV. So in the last five years, teens have been watching 6% more TV. On average, Teens spend more time, teens spend more than 104 hours a month watching TV. They spend an average of about 12 hours online. So at this time, all people assume that uh, teenagers only surf the internet. So this article shows the opposite, that teenagers also watch TV. Actually, it's 104 hours a month, which is a really high number. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, insha'Allah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.